The final unit of the year is modern physics. The first lesson is about the Bohr model of the atom. I'd like to start with a history of atomic theory. You don't have to write this down, but I think it's important that you hear it. Atomic theory originates in ancient Greece and India. Atomism is the belief that all matter is composed of discrete units that are indestructible and immutable. At the time, this is more of a philosophical idea and not a scientific principle. There isn't much advancement in atomic theory for over 2,000 years. In 1808, John Dalton proposes that each chemical element is composed of atoms of a single unique type. Almost 90 years later, J.J. Thompson discovers the electron, proving that atoms are not actually indivisible, but are made of positively and negatively charged components. This is often referred to as the plum pudding model. In 1909, Ernest Rutherford discovers that the positive charge of an atom is located in a small, compact nucleus surrounded by the negatively charged electrons. This comes from the famous gold foil experiment. In 1913, Niels Bohr accounts for shortcomings in the Rutherford model by restricting electrons to particular circular orbits of fixed energy. Finally, in 1926, Erwin Schrödinger describes the electron as a wave function rather than a point particle. This is often referred to as the electron cloud model. Before we can go much further, we have to talk about particle wave duality. This is where you should start taking notes. In the Bohr model, electrons make transitions between energy levels by emitting or absorbing energy. This energy is in the form of a photon, and a photon is a particle of light. This might prompt you to ask, but isn't light a wave? Actually, it's both. There are many phenomena that involve light. A few of them are listed here. Some of these can be explained as light behaving like a wave. Others can be explained as light behaving like a particle. Reflection, refraction, interference, polarization, and diffraction can all be explained as light behaving like a wave. The new phenomenon of electron transitions cannot be explained if light is behaving like a wave. Reflection and refraction can also be explained as light behaving like a particle. However, light behaving as a particle cannot explain interference, polarization, or diffraction. Most importantly, the only way that we can explain electron transitions is as light behaving like a particle. Let's talk about electron transitions in the hydrogen atom. In the hydrogen atom, energy levels are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. When an electron absorbs a photon, the electron transitions to a higher energy level. When it emits a photon, it transitions to a lower energy level. Let's take a look at an example. This is a representation of the hydrogen atom with the electron in the energy level n equals 1. If it absorbs a photon, it will transition to a higher energy level. At this point, it could absorb another photon and go to some higher energy level. Eventually, it will emit this energy as a photon and return to n equals 1. This energy level diagram is another way to represent those energy levels. Let's take a look at some of the key parts of this diagram. On the left, you have the names of the levels. For the hydrogen atom, these are numbered. You'll see on your reference table that for the mercury atom, the energy levels are lettered. On the right, we have the energies of the levels. There are two important things to note. First of all, these energies are in units of EV. More about this later. Second, these energies are listed as being negative. The third important thing to note is that n equals 1 is considered the ground state. This is the only stable state. The electron can stay in the ground state forever. When the electron exists at a higher energy level, it will eventually transition back down. Finally, notice that the highest energy level above n equals 6 is called n equals infinity. This is known as the ionization level, and this represents that the electron has gained enough energy to escape the atom. That energy unit, EV, stands for electron volt. An electron volt is the amount of energy gained by an electron moving across a potential difference of 1 volt. Let's calculate it. Work equals potential difference times charge, 
and if we plug in 1 volt and the charge of the electron, we get a work of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. This means that 1 electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. You should write this down in your notes, but keep in mind that this is also found on the front page of your reference tables. Let's talk a little more about the energy levels themselves. The energy of the levels represents the amount of energy required for an electron to become ionized from that level. Since the electron is basically missing this energy, it's described as being negative. Keep in mind that there's no such thing as negative energy. It's also important to note that electrons cannot exist between energy levels. They are either on n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or they have gained enough energy to become ionized. This means that when an electron makes a transition, it must absorb or emit the perfect amount of energy. The energy of the photon involved in the transition is equal to the absolute value of the difference between the energy levels. The energy of a photon is directly proportional to its frequency. This relationship is apparent in the equation E photon equals HF. E photon is the energy of the photon, F is the frequency, and H is a constant known as Planck's constant. You can find this value on the reference table. It's 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. You'll see this equation written in an additional form on your reference table. Since F is equal to C over lambda, the energy of the photon could also be equal to hc over lambda. Let's take a look at an example. I want to know what color is the photon that is emitted when the electron makes a transition from n equals 4 down to n equals 2. The first step is to determine the energy of the photon in electron faults. If we take the absolute value of the difference between 0.85 electron volts and 3.4 electron volts, we find that the energy of the photon in electron volts is 2.55. Next, we have to convert from electron volts to joules. To do this, we'll set up a proportion. 1 electron volt over 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules equals 2.55 electron volts over x. We find that this energy in joules is 4.08 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Next, we have to calculate the frequency of the photon. We know that the energy of the photon equals Planck's constant times the frequency. If we solve for the frequency, we get 6.15. If we solve for the frequency of the photon, we get 6.15 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Finally, we have to look up the frequency on the reference tables to determine what color this is. It's blue.